Hey, back at it on another bonus edition of the Mr. Peter Parker podcast. I got Brody Fresh in here today. Tito is on hiatus. We're going to talk about, I don't know, a lot of stuff. You're on tour with Conway. Uh, you, you kicked it with King Los on an incredible tour. You've been working. Um, and I'm on an interview with Peter Parker. You're here something. with the guy right now. Shout to Sincere for making it happen. Told hey, Eiffel. What you saying? Yeah, yeah, Queens, New York, Long Island. He's in Connecticut. Let's get to it. Yeah, yeah, let's get it. But me and you got a chance to connect last week. Conway, um, you know, Griselda, Conway the Machine came out here on a tour. Uh, one of the first tours that I was even able to even see or be a part of at all uh, post-COVID. You know, I was on the mic hosting and I was like, whose first show is it back? And it was like the whole room's like, yeah! Dogs, you've been out on a 22-city tour with one of the most heralded lyricists in the game right now, a guy that everybody's fucking with, everybody respects, and it's people's first time back outside. Has this been something cool for you to experience? Yeah, it's definitely been dope for sure. Um, you no, know, as you said, it's not my first tour. It's, no. it, it's just like, it's, it's been refreshing to be back outside for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People, people were amped up. They were like really ready to rock with you guys. You know, even with you, someone that may be new to the market out here in Minneapolis, they you jumped in the crowd and had them immediately. Uh, they were ready to go. Yep, it was dope. It was dope. I ain't gonna lie. It, yeah. You know, of course, it looked like it was a slow start in many for a first second, but then I it got know. it I got kind of back in there. It's a late room, bro. I'm telling you, Fine Line is a good spot though. A great show. Stove God Cooks was out there. My man yeah, Juice Lord performed. Stove God was crazy. He came out with dope. a T-shirt wrapped like it was 2002. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that was my wave back then. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, he definitely has that vintage uh, swag for sure. Nah, he's the man, bro. Yeah, and you, dope, you've been dope. doing some stuff out here, running around, doing tours. I, I was impressed to see that you were with my man Tone Eiffel, who I know from the streets and running around out here in the industry. But you had Jam Master J's son, Jason, as your DJ, as your like kind of core DJ. Dude, that's a very cool thing. He was a cool guy. I got a chance to meet him. Talk about that relationship. Um, so Jay is actually um he's uh he's sort of like he's family through through family. Uh, you know, one of his uh cousins was dating one of my family members. So okay, you know, we've grown to be, you know, like like real family over the years. So mm -hmm. it was dope, you know, like we always had that connection. Me and Jay, you know, me and Jay. We went through a lot together, struggling together a lot. So, you know, there was mm -hmm. times when Jay was really, you know, dealing with life and, and I was dealing with life and we all right. lived in the same house and we were just trying to figure it out, you know? So he was really around for like the very, very beginning of my career. Like before mm -hmm. I even probably even recorded my first song, Jay's in my first music video ever. That's you know dope. what I'm saying? So that is dope. Dope to kind of come full circle and, and, and bring it back to that. Cause you know, we had never, he DJ for me maybe once or twice before um, mm -hmm. over the years, but, this wasn't actually like kind of planned for the tour. He was actually DJing for uh, my brother SKE, who's on the tour with me as well. Yeah, he's um, dope. Yeah, hell yeah. So I happened to work out that, you know, my, my other DJ had a situation with work, couldn't make it out. And me and Jay was like, yo, let's rock. And we just rock. So it, it's dope. It's dope. Most definitely. It was cool to see uh, the certain affiliates that were on the tour with Conway and them and people like on the rise like you, and SK, and, and just seeing like the Griselda wave and how it's impacted so many people and giving people a lane that or a lyricist that were maybe like, how am I going to get my art off? And oh, right. this is cool again. Right, 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 Fucking right. God for West Side Gun and Rock Marciano and these people. Uh yeah, but even before this, before this, you were rocking with the lyricists and you were out with King Los mm -hmm. and Corey Guns, who are both savage MCs mm -hmm. from a previous era, really, like uh, about 10 years ago. They were really buzzing, both of them. You mm -hmm. out with those guys. What was it like to share a stage with those animals? Man, it was different. Um, that was very, very, that was my first tour ever was with King Los. Yeah, that, bro. Uh, 2013. Um, you know, it was kind of crazy how things could go, but you know, I had uh, I had met a guy named Ernie who owns a company called After Platinum, which, which Corey Guns and Lowe's were both like signed to. I think it was like some kind of management situation. Okay. And uh, I had reached out to Ernie to get a feature actually from Corey. I want to say like late 2012, and you know, we chopped it on the phone a couple times, and we didn't actually get to it yet. Like we was figuring it out, and I was new. It was about two years in there rapping. Sure. And uh, it just so happened I went to. Uh, I went to A3C Festival, yep. late 2012. And it was booming when it was really the thing to be at. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really about the culture and it was, it was super right. dope. Yeah. 
And um, you know, I, I just happened to go. I had got interviewed actually by a, a girl out there on, on a on a little podcast out there. Mm-hmm. And um, she brought me with one of her affiliates to DTP Studios, which is Luda's studio. Dope. And as we're pulling up, you know, a car pulls up and these these guys get out, and I don't know who's coming there, but it just so happens that King Lose is there mm-hmm. and um and the Ernie guy. Mm-hmm. So now we're chopping, we're like, you know, we're all introducing each other. Hey, my name is blah, blah, blah. He said, oh, my name is Ernie. And I put two and two together, like, hey, are you Ernie from After Platinum? He's like, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, how you know? Because, you know, he's a behind the scenes guy. So he's sure, like, yeah, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm fresh. I talked to you about the Corey feature. He's like, oh, shit. Like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Purses are good here. Say it again? Purses are good here. Oh, fuck. Come on, bro. Make it short. Hey, yeah. make it short. Oh, bro, we're on the internet, man. Let's go, man. You make it oh, short. But yeah, Spotify. Yeah. Play. yeah, I'm on Spotify. <laughs> it's fine, man. Right. No, nah, but yeah, so he, uh, you know, he was there and, uh, you know, he was like, oh, that's that's crazy. You know, I don't think that anything happens by accident. The fact that I was talking on the phone. I live in Arizona. You live all the way in New York. And we right, just so happened to bump into each other in Atlanta on a random. That's the coolest so, shit, though, industry-wise. When you uh, meet up with people out of town, the respect is high. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, he, so, you know, he felt like, wow, like, right, I see you actually working. You out here. Yep. You should make something happen. And, um, you know, we stayed in contact. And the next year, uh, I want to say around April, they announced, I saw King Lewis announce the tour. And, you know, I just, I, I had no money. I had nothing. I was, <laughs> I was just trying to, like, I was like, man, like, let me see if I could just shoot to the sky and see if something happens with this. But I reached yeah. out and I was like, yo, Ernie, what's up with that tour, bro? Like, I'm, I'm trying to go on tour, I'm ready. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And he was like, you know, he he, uh, he was like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna go over it and see and speak to the guys and blah, 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 and he did it. You know, he let me know the business side, you know, just the number. Sure. He was like, listen, the first show is, this is probably early May, he gets back to me. He's like, um, no, actually, no, it was like the, it was like the week, I wanna say probably like May 21st. He got back to me and he's like, you're in, if you can make it happen, um, you know, financially. And if you can make it the first show, right. May 26th, my birthday is May 26th. So I'm like, I, sign. I gotta go. I'm I have to do it. Be, I'm with it. Like, yeah, yeah, I have I'm to do it. 23, yeah. like, let's go. And it was like, um, you know, like I'm thinking the first show is going to be Baltimore in my head. Just, I don't know why I thought that, but Los is from Baltimore. So I'm like, right. they're going to kick off the tour in Baltimore. And we're gonna keep going. So I'm like, I'm in New York. I can jump in my car, drive to Baltimore, because I'm gonna drive my car the whole way. So it's not bad. Oh. You can do that, yeah. And he was like, Yeah, man. I'm I'm like, yeah, I'm locked in, I'm locked in. And then I'm like, just send me the details, let me know, you know, what venue I gotta be at and all that stuff, I'll make it work. And he hit me on like May 24th and was like, Yeah, here's the venue. And the first show was in Dallas, Texas. And I was oh, like, Oh no. Whoa. I was like, whoa, I was like, how am I gonna get to Dallas? Like, yeah, I'm like, man. I'm like, that's a different drive than Baltimore for oh, sure. No, that's a mission. <laughs> that's a real, that's a venture. Dallas is something different, right? So I hop in the car and we load up the car, little Honda, and we we drive, man. And wow. we drive to Dallas, Texas. Oh no, you're sick. No but, no- but this is real. <laughs> talk, yeah. Let's talk about this for a second. Like, as a young artist, you're talented. Obviously, you can rap your ass off. You're really good. You got a great voice. But but then you get in a situation where they're like, oh, you gotta you gotta come make this happen. It's like it, it may be it, it looks like a job almost, but it's really like an opportunity, and right. you have to go and hustle. I've right. been there when that shit is like that. Oh, you can come be on this radio station, but you gotta move yourself here and shit oh, yep, yep, yeah yep. and you're like yeah, fuck, fuck. i'll roll the guys yeah it, it seems it seems impossible especially when you don't have the finances and you don't have the backing and it just you know but it's like the passion for it. when you're not chasing money you're chasing the passion it just got to bet you, on yourself you know makes you get up and go and you know i went and i followed los and honda all the way around the country <laughs> i see and, uh, it's great it, it. It, it, it works it. for people it, it does it was, it was you talking about Dollar mill, dollar menu, uh, you know, every day, and we just cool. made it. You know, and I, I got to meet some dope people on that tour. You know, Los was a good dude, though. So it was like, he was a good dude. It was a dope opportunity to be around because he he actually like had us in the studio with him. He allowed yeah. us to kind of see, you know, the ins and outs. And, and he was it. writing for a lot of people back then too. He was yeah. really, really active and that big. Was like the, a super yeah. active moment for him. So it was. I remember that when he was like wildly hot in the DMV area coming out of Baltimore, but he was really like a national moving around and, and killing yeah. sway in the morning and stuff like yeah. that. That's when yeah. I met uh, I met Bullet Kev back then. My man. In Arizona. And you know, like we we did some things, man. We got to move around and it was kind of like my first really seeing like seeing outside of the, the tri-state area, just really seeing different yeah, things. Yeah, I'd never been to a lot of those states. 
It was dope. It was dope. It's really refreshing when you get out of the noise and see everything see that's everything happening. That's it's happening. It's kind of like, like I, I don't know. It just opens your mind up to like how to connect with different audiences and different. Uh, you you feel like the the whole world is like the Northeast, and it's not. It's not, really at not at all. And you go to middle America and you're like, oh, these folks are cool and they're with the shits I'm doing. Yeah. And you came to Minnesota and connected with them like that. Yeah. How did you link with Conway? That's a good look. Like what, how we we'll talk about this relationship, man. A friend of mine who works for me, JY, he, uh, he had a, a relationship with um, actually Benny's manager. Yep. And, um, you know, we were talking about going on the tour with Benny and, and running on that run. And, you know, when they came back with the info, they were like, listen, there's only, there's only nine available shows on the Benny tour because he's bringing a lot of people with yeah, him. Yeah, no, I see the game. Yeah, I see what it is. Oh, so, um, you know, they basically were like, oh, but the Conway tour is wide open. So we're like, you know, we sat and talked about it. It was like, you know, I, I see how it could still make sense. And um, Yeah, it's good. We went for it. I mean, we locked in and we made it happen. That's really cool, though. No, it, this is this is business for independent artists that need to hear this, like yeah. meeting people, but there's still business involved. With this. And it's an investment on your end a lot of times. Yeah. But you really get to touch a market. You get to come out, meet DJs, meet people. Right. Um, a few years ago, you had a record that you worked to radio. So you you're not new to like the politics of mm -hmm. the rap game. Absolutely. You feel at times the politics, it makes the shit daunting. Is it too much? Like the is it too much at times? It's a lot. I think even and I know you're familiar with DJ enough. And I think uh, my bro, no, big bro, yeah. Don't quote me incorrectly, but I believe he said he loves music. He hates music business. Yeah, it's that's hard. Like his, that's like one of his uh one of his quotes. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, you know, it's like it kind of takes uh the love of it out of it sometimes, not all the time, business is business. It can though, it can strip the love away from it, yeah. Because yeah, when you're investing into yourself and you're investing so much into, you know, your career and different things and then people treat you less than you feel like they, you deserve to be treated, it, it makes it tough because you're tough. like, you know, this is deeper than just money for me, but on top of that, it's all I got. I mean, I'm giving you everything I got and I'm giving everything I got. So it's all, it's really People all don't remember that uh, as an artist, it's like your identity. So when you're like, oh, like, oh, you're only worth this. It's deeper than just like you're paying a rapper. It's a person's identity who's like expressing right. themselves on a grand scale, putting themselves all the way out there, seeing success. It's fucking crazy, man. Yo, yo, talk about New York for a second. I, I really think this versus thing has really lit up a lot of good energy. The lock dip set was, I was yep. the most engaged on anything the whole summer with that. And mm -hmm. even recently fat Joe and Ja Rule was a lot of fun. I don't think it was on the same level, but it was a lot of fun regardless. If you forgot about that, ja Rule for a second, man. He came, bro, he came with it. And this swing it, bro, I ain't gonna lie, man. Like I, he really came out swinging for real. You know, he's in shape. He looks good. You know what I mean? Like at the ja Rule. Like ja Rule when he left, <laughs> I still look like Ja Rule. I know. I know. Do you the think same, that? Like same is that like the same body shape. It's crazy. No, he look. He looked exactly like Ja Rule from 15 years ago. Do you think the the, the energy is lighting the city up a little bit? Do you feel like you feel it? I'm definitely. I mean, the thing about New York is, man, it's like New York is in such a space right now musically that it's like all of the big artists from New York right now, mm -hmm. their whole career basically revolves around beef and, and right. the streets and, and like that. And like more so to me than ever. Cause I know that back then it definitely was like that, you know, Fat Joe and a lot of, a lot Everybody. of all the Nas and Jay-Z, they're all talking about yeah. each other on the records. Yeah. yeah. But you know, like back then I feel like, you know, it wasn't as, first of all, the kids weren't as young mm -hmm. and it wasn't as violent. Uh, like there were obviously, you know, violent moments with a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? But it wasn't more so like, it was like, you know, you got two big artists that are beefing on the record, but at the end of the day, what's the odds that one of them is gonna die? You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's like, it, it, it happened, you know, you know, you have things with like Tupac and Biggie and different situations. But since then, I don't really feel like there was too much of that up until right. now, you know what I'm saying? Like now I feel like, you know, you're seeing people like Pop Smoke die and, you see the other guys going Nipsey, back. Nipsey, Triple X got killed. Just go buying a, going to buy a bike and shit. Like you know, I, I think the world is getting more violent. It's becoming more and more regular, right? To see these things, you know, it's like back in the day, I feel like people feared that. Like, man, I'm not gonna, I can't go shoot Jay Z. Like that's, I'm gonna go to jail. You know what I'm saying? Like that's crazy. And now it's like, like people, I'm nothing to live for anymore, man. It's yeah, crazy. It's lit that, out here. Like it's here. It's like it's like the culture has changed and it's becoming more acceptable, and it, it makes it. 
it makes it weird. It's like, man, do I want to make it? Like, do I want to be that big? Right. If you had a choice, if someone said to you, yo, you could be a producer, you could write, you could be in the game, you could make money, or you could be the biggest star. You make right. the same amount of money, have the same lifestyle, but with the star, you got to deal with all the shit, the right. negative stuff. The other guy can live in peace. Would, mm -hmm. who, who would you choose right now if you had to make that decision? At this point um, in my life, I would definitely choose a piece first. Yeah, the producer, I'm, right, right, 100%. Coming into music, bro, I never really, like, looked at it like that. I never looked, I never really saw myself like, oh, you know what? What if I become the biggest artist in the world? Like, I never really got into thinking about those things when I was going to come up. It was just, yeah. I love music. Yeah, I just wanted to be heard. I believe it. I believe like, however it. I needed to get heard, I just wanted to be heard. And that was the most important thing to me because I felt like I had a message to say and I wanted people to hear it and, you know, potentially assist and help people that were going through the same thing. And I was like, oh, your oh. talent's crazy. I, I, while you were on stage, I said to someone, I think I said to Tone Eiffel, I was like, there's a difference between people that are like trying to be rappers and then someone that's really does it. Mm -hmm. And you, that was you, you like do it. It's like breathing and you jumped in the crowd and you were controlling and just really like an MC, like really ran the room. And you let, raised the bar that night by your energy and the, how aggressive and confident you were on the stage. And that shit is just, comes from time and experience and practicing your craft. It, 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 exceptional, man. Brody Fresh, I need to get through this last segment with you. People need to know the real Brody. I saw you off the mic, family in the background, your beautiful view of your apartment. He's in Connecticut right now. We're talking about a guy that is a, what, Queens, Long Island native, New Yorker. I was raised in Elmont, which is the first city in Long Island. I'm right. They're actually neighboring cities, which is why, you know. Okay. I'm going to make this, this list. It's going to be New York centric. We're going to go through the list. Okay. Favorite New York City food of all time. Ooh. Chinese food. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's rare. I, I was expecting some sort of pizza answer, but no. Uh, okay. Chinese Sure. <laughs> but East Coast Chinese food is so good. It's yeah, so good. Way different than West Coast Chinese food. Oh, and Midwest is forget about it. I can't, you can't even get it. Um, yeah. All right. When you're getting dressed, when you're going out, you're buying gear. Favorite color? Favorite color is red. Okay. All right. Favorite movie of all time? Man, that's hard. Uh, man, favorite movie. I have a lot of favorite movies. I don't know. I, if I have stuff I put on late at night, like when I'm done with the party or something. I come back after the club at like three o'clock in the morning, and I have go-to movies and things that I put I like on. The, I like the old movies for real, like the like the love and hip. Oh, love and hip hop. The love and basketball was the. But yeah, like yeah, the, I mean, yeah, the older life '90s ones. Real life lessons and classic films. So those are my favorite kind of. Movies. Yeah, no, I believe it. favorite TV show. Mm. All time, probably like. Family Matters or Fresh Prince. Those probably Fresh Prince is one of my favorites. I watched like every episode growing up. That was yeah. my favorite, man. Love that. All right. So are you sneaker guy? Definitely. Favorite kicks of all time. Favorite pair. That's hard. That's Come super on. Hard. Probably the uh, Cherry Red 12s. I just picked these up last, last week. week. Oh, see, you were, you're going crazy. This Ain't is what good. I'm doing over here. I'm, these are the airbags. These are Violet Persian BWs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, do think yeah, I got a lot of shit going on, but that's cool. Good, that's a good choice. Very the, rich. Oh, yeah. Favorite New York team? Favorite New York City team? Giants. Oh, God, I hate I know. the Giants. <laughs> I'm from New England. I hate, I hate. <laughs> All right, that's cool. You know, because, you're from, because you're from Boston, I can accept that. Now, no. when people are from Connecticut, I Assholes. can't accept it. No. Because I'd be like, first of all, you don't even got a team. <laughs> so I always said the worst person in the world is a Yankees fan from Connecticut. I was yeah. like, I hate them, man. Come yeah, on. They got no team. They just, no team. They the city works. Okay, Knicks or Nets? Knicks. Okay, favorite Knicks player of all time? All time? That's rough. Uh, Patrick Ewing? Yeah, I love. I used to love John Starks. Yeah, I love. I love he was Starks. tough. I liked Anthony okay. Mason. <laughs> oh, well, okay, all right. Um, overall favorite athlete, personal. Oh, favorite athlete, probably Allen Iverson. Okay, I mean, dude, he's like the guy for real. Yeah. Uh, favorite city in America outside of the tri-state area? L.A. You like L.A. I love LA and hate LA. So it's like, see, that's what I'm saying. There's pieces of LA that I don't like, but that yeah, I do I, like LA. I love though. LA and then I hate it. It's like when I'm, I've lived there before. So it's like when I'm not okay. there. Okay. Like, I, I love, 
I love to me, because I, rem I remember my first time in L.A., and it was actually on, no, it was my second time, but I went as a kid when I was, like, six. So I don't oh, know. wow. Kind of but as an adult, my first time was on Toro Los, and oh, it wow. was, um, it was, like, the last show, I believe. Oh, I can imagine being summer. dope, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that same summer, I went back, because I was on tour with Corey Guns right after, so the following month. Yeah. So when I went on tour with Corey, I ended up getting a budget for the tour, so it was a different scenario. Now I was able to breathe and just kind of take it in without having to stress as much. Yeah, yeah. And I remember staying at the Lowe's Hotel in Hollywood, and, you know, I was with, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the artist Amir Old. He used to no. go out fresh, he does it. No. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's done things with Drake. He signed the Def Jam. Oh, yeah, no. Amir Old and, and Corey, we all went. And everybody, uh, everybody went out that night. It was the last night of tour we went in LA. Mm -hmm. Everybody went out. Mm -hmm. went out da -da -da. And I'm like, I'm not going out. I'm staying inside. <laughs> and I just stayed inside. And um, I just stared out the window, bro. Like, and it was just like the most craziest thing to me because it just felt like looking at that view, I felt like I could do anything I wanted in the world. There's something about being in LA. I've been there before late at night on the rooftop of some hotel yeah. looking out at the skyline and you feel like you're doing something. You do. You really, it's different out there. It, it, being an East Coast guy, it's like, oh, LA is like a, like a fantasy and being there exactly. is, is exactly. special. I think that's exactly what it is. And we get it from movies. That's of the crazy course. thing. Of course. All of that stuff comes from movies, television. We, we Hype just- it up. Yeah, you see Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, you're like, whoa. That's LA. That's what I'm saying. But like, or, or like gangster rap. You know what I mean? Like Dr. Dre and them. You think you show up in the whole shit's a drive by. You know what no, I mean? Like, it's 100%. 100%. Different. I made a mistake one time. I went to an industry event and I wore like a blue flannel with a Red Sox hat. And they were like, Peter, you're going to get shot. I was, yeah. like, I was like, I don't know. I'm like, like, I'm not even from here. Like I'm that. like, son, I don't even know. I just threw this on. Um, favorite person in your life currently? Favorite person in my life? Yeah. That's hard. Kids. Yeah. My immediate family. You know. Yeah, children and stuff. My daughter's like my favorite. I tell you, she's my favorite person. I see her. I'm just like, oh, you're, she's awesome. Yeah, my girl, my family, I would definitely say those are those are my number ones. Yeah. It's kind of, I got all girls, so it's kind of hard to, uh, you can't say one girl of them. Girl dad. <laughs> no, nah, girl dad is a, girl. Different, is a different <laughs> dad. No, but you, it's a, it's something different and it's special and they're great. Girl dad, oh, I have a daughter and it's like, my guy, yeah. my guy, it's the best. Yo, Brody yeah. Fresh, you're the man, bro. You're super talented. How do people connect with you if they want to hear your music and hear your talent, hear what you do? How do they connect? So everything is Brody Fresh. Um, it's BrodyFresh.com, Brody Fresh on Twitter, IG, Facebook, YouTube. Yep. Apple Music, Spotify, you name it, everything's Brody Fresh. It's B-R-O-D-I-E Fresh. What's next for you? Brody's my last name. Oh, B-R-O-D-I-E, right? Yep. What's your next thing you're doing? What are you doing next? Oh, I'm getting ready to drop a project. I'm finishing up the tour with Conway. We got a show tonight, actually, in Connecticut. Dope. And tomorrow in your hometown. We in Boston tomorrow. Well, yeah, we got Paradise, Middle East, where you are. You know where the show is? Uh, uh, I don't even know, actually. Interesting. Good luck to you, man. But hopefully, it's. I've that Middle East though a couple times. Yeah, my brother Leeds used to run that thing over there. That's a good spot, man. That, that was you know, Paradise, Paradise Rock Club. That's a great room, bro. I saw Ghostface there, and I saw Sheik Luch there. I saw Nas one time at that room. When you're on that stage, remember, I saw Nas there blow his voice out doing "Made You Look," and the whole crowd finished the shit like animals, bro. It was awesome. Awesome. Great room. Have fun. Good luck to you and finishing up the tour, man. For real. Yeah, bro. Appreciate your platform too, for sure. Yo, you're nice with it, man. I'm gonna send you some stuff. I got a couple of records. I have this record that I think that you may be uh, someone that could do some work on. So I got some stuff I'm doing. I'm sending you some sure. shit. Oh, you know, the mic is right there. I see. This is what I'm saying. I'm like, I might as well take advantage of the situation. Yeah, bro. let's get to it. You know what I'm saying? I will. I will. I'll hit you, man. Yo, another bonus episode in the can. We'll be back at it with Tito soon. But Brody Fresh, you're the man. Love, bro. Love, son. Peace.